Uh, pleasant morning and welcome to the 777 Prayer and Health Ministries. We are so delighted that you could join us this another Tuesday morning on this platform for our segment entitled Your Health and You, a look at health, healing, and restoration in preparation for the soon return of our God and King. I'm your host, Pastor Desmond Hay, and I am so delighted to be with you this morning as we continue our Seven Things series. I'm telling you, this has become more and more exciting as the days go by and we've started the year with it and we will obviously culminate uh, very soon but I just want to share with you this morning on the caption seven steps to sweet sleep welcome 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 and we are so glad you could have joined us may I pray with you as we begin this morning's lecture our loving Lord we are so grateful to you for the gift of life we went to our beds last night, did not know, not knowing what would happen throughout the night. We went to our beds without a clue of what was happening around us as we slept. We praise you that you have preserved us. And here we are again, together to learn more of you. We're so thankful for the privilege of life that we woke up and alarm clock did not wake up, wake us up, but you did. And for that, we are grateful. We praise you for the privilege of being in your presence. Watch over us now and guide our steps is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen and amen. If you're out there on YouTube, we encourage you to like, share, and hit the notification bell. So when we go live again, you will be alerted regarding these transformative and powerful programs that we do on the 777 Prayer and Health Ministries platform. Well, to establish our presentation this morning, you know, we teach from three perspectives. We believe in the Bible. If you're hearing me out there, type the word Bible in your chat. We believe the Bible is our rule of faith and practice. We believe that every true science finds its genesis in God. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 31 regarding your health and mine, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. We believe also in inspiration. We believe not only that the Bible was inspired, but we believe that God in a very special way has blessed his last day people with the gift of prophecy. It's one of the identifying marks of God's remnant people at the end of time. And we believe that this gift was manifest in a very special sense in the life and ministry of Ellen G. White. We utilize her counsels, especially in health and healing and restoration, to give direction to God's people at the end of time. You can research more about E.G. White. She's one of the most translated authors in human history, and her book, The Desire of Ages, is the number one book on the life of Christ in the Library of Congress. We also believe in good science, which supports the Bible and inspiration. We firmly believe that every true science finds its genesis in God. God is the master scientist. And so we believe in robust empirical evidence for God's people. We firmly believe that we can walk the scientific realm. We can be strong in science and yet faithful to scriptures. And so you will hear nothing but great, robust science on these lectures. So come with me, come along with me this morning as we focus on seven steps to sound sleep, to sweet sound sleep, if you please. Now, I want to begin this morning's lecture by laying a solid foundation. You and I are aware that sleep is vital for health. 
I grew up in the Caribbean island of Jamaica, and I grew up hearing my mother saying these words. There is nothing for sleep but sleep. And as a child, I did not understand because my childhood exuberance would get the better of me. And my mother would repeat in that house, there is nothing for sleep but sleep. And as kids, and for, I'm from a large family of 12, and as kids, we would run around, we would play, and we would never want, we never try to stop. We we're going, you know, as children, they're going and they're going and they will not stop. My mother would repeat, there is nothing for sleep but sleep. And sometimes we found ourselves way in the night, sitting on a couch, fast asleep. We missed dinner. We missed getting that shower. And when you checked the time, it was 1130 or 12. And we had fallen asleep as kids, not even getting to, getting to dinner or even getting an evening shower. So when you're tired, what that tells you, when you're tired, you will sleep. As a matter of fact, as we established that sleep is vital for health and well-being in children, in adolescents, and adults, according to the research, healthy sleep, my friends, is important for cognitive functioning, mood, mental health, cardiovascular, cerebrovascular, and metabolic health. Adequate quantity and quality of sleep also play a role in reducing the risk of accidents and injuries caused by sleepiness and fatigue, including workplace accidents and motor vehicle crashes. Short-term sleep deprivation, long-term sleep restriction, circadian misalignment, and untreated sleep disorders can have a profound and detrimental impact on physical, mental health, mood, and public safety. Chronic insufficient sleep is associated, ladies and gentlemen, is associated with an increased risk of mortality and contributes to both the individual risk and societal burden associated with several medical epidemics, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity, and cancer. Uh, emerging data is suggesting that extending the nightly sleep duration of people who habitually get insufficient sleep is associated with health benefit. As a matter of fact, sleep, healthy sleep requires adequate sleep duration, appropriate timing, regularity, the absence of sleep disorders, and good quality, which can be indicated by both self-rating and objective sleep continuing variables. Now, we know that there is a lot out there on sleep and sleep research, and I will share with you as we begin some background information. What are the stats? I'm going to bring it down to the simplest way possible for all of us. What are the stats out there regarding sleep? I'm going to share with you nine incredible sleep statistics that should lay the backdrop for these seven steps to sweet sleep. About one third of American adults report, re, report getting less than seven hours of sleep a night on average. And sleep deprivation is a global issue. Among US states, Hawaii, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee report the highest rates of insufficient sleep. An estimated 50 to 70 million Americans have chronic sleep disorders. American adults feel sleepy three days a week, which is linked to poor mood and overall feeling unwell. Lack of good sleep is linked to worse mental health, trouble thinking, risk for heart disease and dementia. 
Sleep loss may increase or intake of unhealthy foods and promote weight gain. Almost a billion people around the world are likely to have obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, a condition that damages sleep quality and health. China has the highest rates of sleep tablet use, with one in five people using prescription sleep drugs. Getting better sleep is linked to better memory improved focus, calmer emotions, and more creativity. And so this morning, as I've laid that foundation on this subject matter of sleep, we are going to dive right in to seven steps to sweet sleep. Write these down, ladies and gentlemen. Share this video with your friends or with your neighbors. It might be the single most important thing to transform their life and their health. Believe me, it will be a blessing. Step number one, sweet sleep starts with your morning routine. Yes, if you really want to prioritize good sleep, you have to start thinking about it long before you hit the day. Here are three simple steps to take each day, to take charge of each day, and to help promote good sleep later that night. Ladies and gentlemen, number one, optimize your light exposure. Research is revealing that how and when we interact with light can significantly alter our biology, whether it's an increased risk for mood issues in people who get less daylight in the winter, or eye strain from looking at a digital screen, light exposure affects our bodies and brains in a number of ways. As it relates to sleep, there are two specific ways in which light exposure is worth extra focus. Number one, get more natural light in the morning. While you never want to look directly in the sun, Getting natural light in your eyes may help your brain to know that the day is starting. Setting the circadian rhythm, the body's 24-hour internal rhythm, and prepping the brain so it knows to get ready for sleep at the end of the day. In addition, ladies and gentlemen, for some people, morning light may be helpful for a mood boost. Ideally, shoot for direct sunlight in your eyes within an hour of waking without sunglasses or through a glass may be the very best. Even overcast days provide for you and I an opportunity and a decent dose of natural light. It is very important to know that artificial lights don't convey the same benefits unless they're specialized with artificial boxes, light boxes designed to mimic sunlight. Number two, get less artificial light at night, especially blue light. And we will talk about that in number seven, ladies and gentlemen. We want you to understand principle step number one, sweet sleep starts with your morning routine. Try this, ladies and gentlemen. Get 15 to 30 minutes of early morning sun in your eyes. Remember, don't look directly at the sun now. Consider taking a morning walk outside to capture some of the sun's rays. Try drinking your, your, your morning cup of tea outside if you can. Your herbal tea as we promote and encourage not coffee or caffeine. Limit your overall exposure to digital devices one to two hours before bedtime. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand sweet sleep starts with your morning routine. I want you to recognize also that it is very important that you have a great routine. Rising at a set time, having your personal devotion, your personal time of meditation and prayer is crucial. Step number two in sweet, getting a sweet sleep is make your room a sleep sanctuary. 
Yes, with our modern lifestyle keeping us busy and engaged for so many of our waking hours, it's easy for you and I to work and entertain ourselves in our bedrooms. Now we live in an age where there are televisions in our bedrooms, special gadgets in our bedrooms. Ladies and gentlemen, a number of recent researches uh, or surveys have concluded that most of us reach our phones in the first few minutes after waking. And I have been guilty of that, ladies and gentlemen, but I want you to understand, but beyond the tech, we often ignore the role of variables like temperature, light, and sound on our sleep quality. Here's how we can counter each of these and create a more restful bedroom and promote healthier sleep. Principle number two is to make your room a sleep sanctuary. Number one, remove unnecessary devices. We live in an era where almost everyone is interacting with technology all day long. It's important that we draw a boundary with our tech so that it doesn't impair our sleep quality. There are a number of reasons why having unnecessary technology. Are we thinking about TVs and smartphones and tablets in your room or having them at night? before bed. It can be a problem for good sleep, but here are four, based on the research, of the most important. Tablets, phones, and TVs emit blue light, which can suppress our body's natural window down sleep cycles and disrupts melatonin release. Next, have number two, having devices in our rooms makes us more likely to stay up late on our screens, distracting us from getting to bed on time and cutting in our nightly rest. Number three, smartphones can unexpectedly buzz, light up, or otherwise try to notify us, waking us unnecessarily from sleep. And for those of you who will have to listen to a beeper like myself during the night, it can be very, very challenging, ladies and gentlemen. Number four, our digital devices are activating our brains, especially if we're consuming stressful media. That revs up our brains and makes it harder for them to get into the calmed state that is best for falling and staying asleep. But why don't you try this? Try walk around your room and remove all unnecessary devices, especially those with screen. Yes, you even need to remove that flat screen TV from your room. Do your best and avoid electronic devices, keeping them outside of the bedroom. That means charging your phone outside your bedroom. Now, my wife gets to me on this one because she always encourages uh, this one. Please leave your phone on the outside. And oftentimes I don't because I respond to crisis calls at night. And so I, I always fear, oh, what if? It goes off and there's a crisis and I can't respond. But nevertheless, it is an area that I need to work in, work on. And many of you might be taking your screen, your phone with you to bed or near to your bed because of you work in healthcare and um, you want to be able to respond to cause. And the next tip I want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, is purchase a low-tech alarm clock instead of using the one on your phone. You also need to remove unnecessary noises. Making changes to lower exposure to nighttime noises can be challenging, especially if you live somewhere loud. If you have roommates, I lived in New York City for many years and it is a rumbling, bustling city, the city that never sleeps all night. There is traffic and movement and people and noise and they came under my window and they were chatting and it was just crazy. So you need to make sure that you avoid uh, individuals or circumstances that are loud and noisy, but the science here doesn't lie. 
Noisy bedrooms are simply bad for our sleep quality. Try this. Seal the cracks. Sounds can easily navigate around unless uh, doors, if there are gaps between them, uh, under our doors, if you can see gaps around and under your door, consider purchasing materials to help close the holes and keep out unnecessary noise. Add noise absorbers. Remember how much louder it was when you first moved into your empty house, apartment, or even your dorm room? Sounds like to bounce off hard surfaces and reflect throughout the room. How do you stop this from happening? Consider getting a plush carpet, adding a piece of furniture, hanging some art, or putting some plants in your bedroom. Now, one of the things we need to note about plants is that at nights, we plants reverse that cycle. And so, you know, during the day, plants receive, gives off what? Oxygen and uptakes carbon dioxide. At night, it reverses. And so we discourage individuals from sleeping with plants in your bedrooms. Yes, my friends, I want you to understand that invest in a white noise machine. Fight fire with fire. It turns out that you can indeed fight back against noise pollution using the power of white noise. Use of a white noise machine has been shown to offset a loud urban environment uh, as measured by better reported and measured sleep quality. It's important to note that there's a huge range of white noise machines, and some play natural noises while others play a low mechanical hum and other sounds like a fan. You know, to some degree, finding the right white noise machine is a personal preference for you. But you want to optimize your bedroom temperature. You might not think about it outside of feeling occasionally uncomfortable or getting a fever, but our internal temperature changes throughout the day. In fact, they actually vary by around two degrees Fahrenheit overnight. This seemingly subtle change is perhaps most notable for the drop in temperature that happens before bedtime, which is linked to release of the sleep hormone melatonin. When it comes to the connection between temperatures and sleep quality, slightly lower temperatures seem to be better and to be the key. In a recent study, researchers compared bedroom temperatures with quality of sleep and found that cooler temperatures were linked to better sleep. Yes, my friends, what are the ideal temperatures that promote sleep? This may vary from person to person, but the scientific consensus speaks to a gold bedroom temperature of around 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about, about 15.6 to about 20 degrees Celsius, 19.4 degrees Celsius. So 60 to, 6, 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit, which amounts to about 15.6 to 19.4 degrees Celsius. If you live somewhere less noisy and cool, consider opening windows at night. If you have an air conditioner, setting it between 64 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit is perfect. Consider using a fan to help keep your bedroom cool overnight. Try a shower before bath, before bedtime. Ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be crucial for optimal health. Make your bedroom a sleep center principle or step Number two. Step number three, prepare your brain and body for sleep. One of the clearest connections between psychological state and sleep relates to stress. Spe specifically, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to fall asleep if our minds are anxious and spinning. 
Now, while people with significant ongoing stress may benefit from seeking professional help, there are a number of straightforward practices that can help our brains to wind down from the day's stressors. Listen to music, my friend. In addition to just being enjoyable, research suggests that listening to certain types of music may have beneficial effects on our bodies that could translate into better sleep. For example, one study showed that people who listened to classical music had decreases in their levels of the stress hormone cortisol. Listening to music uh, during the day has been linked to improvements in reported sleep quality. The perfect way to use mute music for better sleep hasn't really been established. But to begin, you might try considering, consider try, you might consider listening to relaxing music in the hour before bed. Try this. Put on your headphones and listen to classical music in the hour before bedtime. Combo calming music with another calming bedtime routine, like a breathing exercise, a bath or shower, or light stretching. You can put some lavender in that bath, light that candle, and you work for it. You deserve it. Lay down in the tub, soak yourself two hours before bedtime, and you're going to find that you're going to feel better. Take that hot bath, that shower before bed. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, uh, research is indicating that there is much more science uh, to uh, that shower than you might have guessed. When we take a hot bath or shower, we initially are warmed by the water. But after we get out, our blood vessels stay dilated, which transfers heat to our hands and feet. That heat is more easily lost to our environment, and the net effect is actually lowering our core body temperature, which again promotes better sleep. To be more specific about the science, there was a recent analysis. It examined a number of scientific studies on the subject. It found that water temperatures of 40 to 42.5 degrees Celsius, around 104 to 108 degrees Fahrenheit, between one to two hours before bedtime for a minimum of 10 minutes was linked to short time falling asleep and better reported sleep quality. So take a hot shower or warm bath in about two hours before bed, or if you're lucky enough to, act, to have access to a hot, hot tub in your home, that works well. Also, practice mindfulness, practice prayer and meditation. We all know that when we pray, prayer is talking to God as to a friend. Memorize scriptures. Focus on God. The research calls this more of mindfulness, and their concept of mindfulness is different for the biblic from the biblical perspective of meditating. But I am promoting biblical meditation. You know, more attention, being sensitive to what's going on, focusing your mind on the sacred words of scripture. Uh, find this quiet place, uh, memorizing scriptures uh, five to 15 minutes before bedtime. Gather your family before the family altar. Worship and trust the Lord. Practice the principle of gratitude. You know, consciously drawing attention to what we already have in life is called practicing gratitude. And it's now the subject of a number of scientific studies. But those who are believers in Christ over the years, for many years, Christians have been practicing gratitude. Gratitude practice has, is a big part of positive psychology now, and a number of studies are uh, showing that this practices correlates with be better health outcomes, including better quality of sleep. In essence, the idea is to first affirm the wonderful things in the world and in our lives, and then appreciate that many of these things come from others and from God himself, because all good gifts comes from above, from the Father of life, who giveth to all men, he upbraideth not. We serve a 
good God. Worship him and it will help you to sleep better. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I did not even mention in this principle as about reading a book is very important uh, for improving and preparing your brain and body for sleep. Step number three, prepare your brain for body and prepare your brain and body for sleep. Step number four, move your body every day for better sleep. Physical activity, ladies and gentlemen, has long since been established as one of the best ways to care for our bodies. Yet recent scientific research has shown that moving our bodies is also a great way to care for our brains. One way that seems to happen is by improving the quality of our sleep. In a recent analysis of existing science, researchers found that exercise was linked to significant improvements in sleep quality. This may be especially relevant for people with insomnia. So often, do how often do we need to exercise to reap benefits to our sleep? Do you want to know? In one study looking at older adults, moderate intensity exercise three times a week for at least 12 weeks was best. Yet other data suggests a benefit to sleep that comes from doing regular exercise, such as walking 30 minutes five days a week. As far as duration of exercise, if you're already engaged in an exercise routine, just consider starting with something that you can manage uh, to do for a few days or a few times for the week. Uh, walking around the neighborhood, for example, building this up to longer periods of activity. So shoot for 30 minutes of movement of any kind for at least five days per week. If you are not someone who regularly exercise, experiment with different movements. We're talking about trying some Pilates, resistant training, walking, swimming, and see what you actually enjoy. So you can build five minute intervals in your workday dedicated to some type of movement. Even our watches now, for those who wear an Apple watch, they remind them to move, it's time to move. So get, get up from the chair where you are at home. Walk around if you're at home and it's cold and the weather is tough. Make sure you get exercise. A recommended 30 minutes, five days per week. And you can rise with us every morning on this platform, 6.30 uh, p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time or Standard Time, and you can walk uh, with Sister Hay and all of our partners globally. And principle number four, move your body every day for better sleep. Principle number five, incorporate the early to bed, early to rise principle. Yes, my friend. Our sleep routines are often influenced by our shifting desires, obligations, and schedule. This can translate into vastly different uh, bedtime depending on the day of the week and everything else happening in our lives. But we are increasingly recognizing that when it comes to sleep, consistency is the key. Many of us already know that a regular sleep routine is vital vitally important for children, and it's linked to better memory, focus, and many more benefits. Now, research confirms that a regular sleep schedule is something that adults need to prioritize as well. In an eye-opening article that was published in 2018, researchers looked at the relationship between regular sleep, for example, making frequent changes to your sleep schedule, and a number of other health outcomes. They found that older people reporting more irregular sleep were at increased risk for daytime sleepiness as well as as risk for blood sugar problems and more worse mental health. These types of findings mean that getting good sleep isn't just about the number of hours of sleep, but when 
and how we get these stars. Clearly, we're not always going to be able to get into bed at the same time hour every night, but there are often a number of things that you and I can do to improve the consistency of our sleep. Early to bed, early to rise makes the man or a woman what? Healthy, wealthy, and wise. We, we learned that as children. Set, here are some things you can try. Set and stick to a consistent bedtime and waking time for at least five days of the week. Work backwards from your goal, wake up time and bedtime so you don't find yourself cutting into your sleep period with avoidable tasks or activities. Set an alarm on your phone or alarm clock for 30 minutes before your nightly sleep time to remind when it's time to get into bed. Incorporate the early to bed, early to rise principle in your well-being. Step number five, incorporate that early to bed, early to rise principle. It makes a man or a woman healthy, wealthy, and wise. Principle number, step number six is to recognize that sleep is important for your heart, your hormones, your memory, and more. When you fall asleep and you enter into non-REM sleep, yes, ladies and gentlemen, non-REM sleep, your blood pressure and your heart rate fall. During sleep, your parasympathetic system controls your body and your heart does not work as hard as it does when you're awake. During REM sleep, reduce eye movement, REM, when waking, your sympathetic system is activated, increasing your heart rate and blood pressure to the usual levels when you're awake and relaxed. A sharp increase in blood pressure and heart rate upon waking has been linked to angina, chest pains, and heart attacks. People who do not sleep enough or wake up during the night may have a higher risk of coronary heart disease high blood pressure, obesity, and stroke. Talking about your hormones, your body makes uh, different hormones at different times of day. And this may be related to your sleep pattern or your circadian clocks. In the morning, your body releases hormones that promotes alertness, such as cortisol, right? Which helps you wake up. Other hormones have 24-hour patterns that vary throughout your life. For example, in children, the hormones that tell the glands to release testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone are made in pulses at night. And the pulses get bigger as puberty approaches. Oh, yes, it is very important that our children get real good sleep. We're talking about your memory. Sleep helps with learning and the formation of long-term memories. Not getting enough sleep or enough high-quality sleep can lead to problems focusing on tasks and thinking clearly. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that we need to sleep well for better health. Sleep is important for heart hormones, memory, and so much more. As a matter of fact, so much more. Think of your respiratory and immune system, ladies and gentlemen. During sleep, you breathe less often and less deeply and take in less oxygen. These changes can cause problems in people who have health problems such as asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Asthma symptoms are usually worse during early morning sleep. Likewise, breathing problems in people who have lung diseases, such as COPD, can become worse during sleep. Sleep affects different parts of our immune system, which become more active at different times of day. For example, when you sleep, a particular type of immune cell work harder. That is why people who do not sleep enough may be more likely to get colds and other infection. Principle number seven, and the final one for this morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about a little bit about it earlier, but I want you to know it speaks 
It's about avoiding screens before bedtime, avoiding screens uh, before bedtime. Now, one of the things I want you to note about this, ladies and gentlemen, is that when we are going to our beds, at least two hours before bedtime, we should get off those screens because they are damaging our well-being and our well-fear. As a matter of fact, it is so crucial for optimal well-being that research is showing that we should avoid those screens. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, two hours before bedtime, avoid all usage of our digital gadgets. Uh, we want you to avoid that phone, avoid that the blue light, and ensure that you are in tip-top shape. Remember, health for you, health for me, health for all mankind. As you go, remember the words of my mother, taught to me many years ago, the best remedy for sleep is sleep. My friends, I hope the principles shared in this morning's lecture will be a source of encouragement to you. You can like, share, and subscribe. You can share this with your friends and your neighbors and whomever you come in contact with. Remember, the sleep of a working man is always sweet. May I pray with you this morning? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this body built by God. We thank you that you love us with an everlasting love. And in loving kindness, you're drawing us to yourself. We praise you this morning for this lecture on sleep. And we pray that as we seek to incorporate and practice these principles in our lifestyle, we, our health will improve. We pray you would bless us, you would guide our steps, and you'd guide us on to better and sweeter sleep by incorporating these seven steps. Watch over us, keep us safe, and keep us in good health is my prayer. Amen and amen. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell for those listening on YouTube. Please note that we meet seven in the morning, seven in the evening, seven days per week on the 777 Prayer and Health Ministries. How can you reach us? You can hop into our Zoom room by utilizing the number 813 5055. And that way, ladies and gentlemen, you can put that in your Zoom app. You can be in our room seven in the morning, seven days per week, uh, seven in the evening, seven days per week. Please join us. It's a global prayer movement of individuals focused on health and their well being and who loves the Lord who are seeking to move towards glory. God bless you and have a happy and healthy day.